We cannot pretend to care in the slightest bit about free speech if we are banning speech on the basis that it's hateful towards protected groups. This is not just an infringement on free speech. It is the total eradication of free speech. I seem to remember Republicans spending the past, I don't know, 10 years complaining about the safe space mentality on college campuses. And now we, here we have the, the Republican governor of Texas issuing an executive order commanding college campuses to be safe spaces. The only kind of speech that really needs legal protection in the first place is, is, is the speech that is deemed hateful and inappropriate by the powers that be. Credit where it's due, Matt Walsh has finally, after five years, talked about the anti-Semitism hate speech laws that Republicans are passing through Congress to make them anti-First Amendment, total hypocrites, and total con artists. It sounds too crazy to believe. Republicans selling out the First Amendment? Isn't that what they pretend to not do? It is but they've been lying for years. And I dared Matt on Twitter or X to make a video about it since I've never seen him break it down. He took the dare, he did it, and I'm really grateful because Matt Walsh did an extraordinary job explaining how anti-constitutional, hypocritical, and insane these hate speech laws are. Before we watch this video and break it down, I just wanna say that in this video, Matt said he wasn't sure what the definition of anti-Semitism is that they're using in law. I don't know exactly what sort of speech the governor considers anti-Semitic. That's a big part of the problem here. I do know the definition they're using. I'm gonna show you some examples because it's actually hate speech phrases that they're including. And every single Republican governor and Democrat politician who passes these anti-Semitism hate speech laws are using the same definition. It's really creepy. And it's happening in South Dakota, Texas, Florida, Georgia, Virginia, Arkansas, and even Trump passed it through executive order for the whole nation in schools. Let's start the video. So Governor Greg Abbott here has committed the ultimate sin. He has forced me to agree with a woman from the ACLU with pronouns next to her name. The ACLU is rarely correct about anything these days, and people with pronouns next to their name are correct even less often than that. But in this case, they happen to have stumbled on the truth. As Abbott signs an executive order to fight anti-Semitism on college campuses, this is an executive order targeting what he describes as anti-Semitic acts and rhetoric. In fact, he is ordering colleges in the state to establish appropriate punishments for this rhetoric, which he deems anti-Semitic. And he says explicitly that these offensive statements must be shut down so that college campuses are safe spaces for Jewish people. Now, that's right. The ACLU sucks. A lot of times liberals suck, but that doesn't mean what Republicans are doing is right here. And that's why a lot of people can't figure it out often because they're like, oh, it's the left versus the right. And if the right says it and it's the left, then anomalies to the left. It's like, no, pay attention. Let's get it cracking. I seem to remember Republicans spending the past, I don't know, 10 years complaining about the safe space mentality on college campuses. And now we, here we have the, the Republican governor of Texas issuing an executive order commanding college campuses to be safe spaces. So we seem to have lost the plot here somewhere along the line. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that, Matt Walsh. I just want to show you guys a tweet real quick from February 27th, 2020, right before the lockdowns. Interesting. I said, I don't think people understand why I keep repeating myself. The right wing claims to fight hate speech laws against college safe spaces and for free speech, but they themselves are pushing hate speech laws. And if you stand up for the First Amendment, they call you an anti-Semite. It's correct. I said that over four years ago because I was told by my friends in conservative media that I was being blacklisted for reading aloud these hate speech laws that are being passed into government that everybody conveniently ignored for five years until Candace Owens got fired, Elon Musk bought X, and the public backlash on Twitter is so obvious that people like Matt Walsh seem like a shill and like he's in on it if he doesn't talk about it. So Matt, I'm grateful he talked about it now, but just to let you guys know, this isn't just Governor Abbott, this isn't just Texas, and this isn't just yesterday. It's been happening for five years, and I believe there's been a giant, essentially, cover-up in conservative media to not hire anybody who talks about it, to smear anybody who knows that it's happening as anti-Semitic, and to tell people at these major media institutions to not work with or talk to people who talk about this. They essentially made it, it's the anti-Semites versus us, the nobles. But the nobles weren't talking about the hate speech laws, so it felt like they were in on it. Anyway, we'll get more into that later. Let's keep watching, Matt. It's the only place in the Middle East that has any appreciation for LGBT rights whatsoever. It's the only country in the Middle East that doesn't throw homosexuals off the top of buildings when they find them. It is the only partner that we have in the fight against radical Islamic terrorism. And the, the subtext of your narrative could be extrapolated to say, well, why on earth would we have a partner like Israel? Guess what? The world's a better place because of Israel. 
There are a lot of reasons why governors should not be issuing executive orders to combat anti-Semitism or any other form of bigotry, but I'll focus on just three of those reasons. First of all, violence, vandalism, threats, and deliberate incitement are already illegal. Now, some have defended this executive order by arguing that its, its real intent is to crack down on these you know, sorts of crimes that are committed against Jewish people. But again, these are crimes. They're already illegal. If they're happening anywhere in Texas, whether on a college campus or not, the state already has all of the authority it needs to arrest and prosecute the culprits. 100%. Anytime you try to talk about these anti-Semitism hate speech laws, they just jump to the craziest straw man argument ever to make you look insane. And they're like, do you want people to get hurt? And you're like, of course not. But as Matt talks about, those crimes are already illegal. And that's just what they tell you that they're passing. So then Republicans who consume their media think that anyone who talks against it's crazy and wants to hurt people. But the truth is, Violent crimes and protests that go too far are already illegal, and these hate speech laws are for words. You don't need to make an illegal thing even more illegal. You don't need an executive order making it extra illegal. Just enforce the laws that are already on the books. So, if, say, somebody is vandalizing a synagogue or assaulting a Jewish person or explicitly calling for violence against Jews, they can already be arrested. This order will do nothing to stop or punish those crimes because they already have the laws in place to stop or punish those crimes. I hear what Matt's saying. It's already illegal. Just crack down on those crimes. In some cases, I know Ron DeSantis is hyping up littering charges and stuff like that to charge people even harder, which I'm not sure if Matt's aware of, but his point still stands and I understand it. Let's keep watching. And if somehow they didn't have the laws in place, if let's say Texas had forgotten to make vandalism or assault illegal, well then the solution would be to pass a law making those violent acts illegal. But even then, this executive order would be the wrong way to do it. One, because it's an executive order, not a law. And two, because it seeks to protect one particular group instead of all groups. So vandalism, assault, etc., they are wrong no matter who they target. They are equally wrong no matter who they target. 100%. And like I said in Florida, they're passing extra rules and extra laws for one race, one religion, and one country. If all these things were so horrible, why wouldn't you protect every group? Why wouldn't Ron DeSantis, who claims to be a Christian or a Catholic, why wouldn't he include his own religion in a religious protection bill? Seems a little odd that you'd either police speech for one race, one religion, or one country, or hype up charges only for one race, one religion, and one country. Why is that sending the message that other religions or other ethnicities or other groups, those crimes against them aren't as bad or shouldn't be hyped up as much? It's a lopsided law. Matt Walsh understands it completely. And like I said, I'm just so grateful that he has the balls to cover this because I do believe if he keeps covering laws like this, he might get Candace Owens. Let's keep watching. They should be prosecuted with equal vigor regardless of the demographics of the victim. We do not need laws protecting Jewish people. We need laws protecting people to include Jews, obviously, and everybody else. And if we already have those laws, which we do, then we don't need a second law or order making these crimes extra specially illegal if you commit them against a certain group. But the real point here has nothing to do with physical crimes. The real point is the bit about anti-Semitic rhetoric. I agree with Matt, but in the Republican movement for five years now, I've been blacklisted for saying the same thing. So what you realize is if you don't want extra special rules for extra special people and you don't think they deserve everything special, special rules, special laws, special hate speech, special words, then you are actually anti-Semitic, Matt, and you'll probably be smeared anti-Semitic a thousand times. Obviously, it's not true. It's not right. But when the definition means so many things, suggesting that one group and one race and one religion doesn't deserve these special things, they'll claim that that you're being hateful, even though you're not. So I wonder what Ben Shapiro and Jeremy snoring, <laughs> boring, thinks about what Matt's saying now. It feels like for five years, Daily Wire's whole existence was to not tell people this stuff and smear anybody who noticed as anti-Semitic. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they handle this on this segment. Let's pretend for a moment that we all agreed that so-called hate speech should be banned from universities. Let's pretend that hateful rhetoric really had no place in Texas or anywhere else, as the governor would say. Now, I don't agree with this idea, as I'll explain in a moment, but, but let's grant it for the sake of argument. Well then, why wouldn't the executive order establish appropriate punishments, quote unquote, for hateful rhetoric against anyone of any group? 
And if for whatever reason it was decided that we needed to actually specifically outline every single group that you cannot say hateful things about, then why are certain groups conspicuously left off the list? Matt asks a great question here. Why is it only for one group? Why doesn't it include every group? Hmm, I wonder. I think it's because it's not for every group. It's not for every religion. It's not for every race. And if you ever speculate why it's not an equal treatment law that infringes on the First Amendment, you'll get smeared in not just the left-wing press. This is important because it's not a left or right issue. It's not just left-wing press that's going to smear you as a hater and anti-Semitic. It's right-wing press. And in fact, I think as somebody who's been falsely smeared as anti-Semitic by these scumbags, I think right-wing press is actually worse. When I say people are controlled opposition, I'm not just saying it to hear myself talk. It's like they plant the story in right-wing press. It spreads all over the place. And it seems almost like they're working against you on this topic harder than the left. It's really weird. So Matt's completely right with his questions. But what you realize is creepy. Everything's fake. The whole shtick that they've been doing for years, the no safe spaces, we're on college campus fighting the left. It's literally all fake, not kind of fake. And it's like, oh, everybody makes mistakes. We're all flawed. We all have sins, of course. No, it's like 100% fake. Like the whole thing is a lie. Real quick, before I play another clip, I wanna show you another tweet from May 22nd, 2020. I said, Republicans push speech laws, add safe spaces at colleges, blacklist, censor, avoid debate, exaggerate claims of racist words and anti-Semitic statements to fight the left censorship and snowflake culture. I'm right, but the truth isn't popular. And for five years, it wasn't popular. Nobody knew what I was talking about. These videos got no views. People accused me of being hateful or jealous or you don't know what you're talking about because I, I don't hear it on the shows I watch. And now it's all getting popular. That's why Matt Walsh is talking about it because he can't avoid not talking about it. But I could even bring up tweets of 2019 where I'm saying the same thing. It's not necessary. I just want to let you know that this has been going on for a long time, and I believe the blacklisting has been incredibly severe. It's the same way left-wing media, they only hire people who won't say certain things, and the second that they wake up, they get fired. You think that it's only happening in left-wing press, or it's only the rhinos, but what if I told you that the people you think fighting the rhinos are also rhinos? Looks like a safari out here if you really know what's going on, but anyway, let's watch the clip. It is rather hard to imagine Greg Abbott ever issuing an executive order calling for punishments for anti-white rhetoric on college campuses, in spite of the fact that anti-whiteism is not only incredibly pervasive on every major university campus in the country, but it's also part of the curriculum. Students are forced to listen to anti-white screeds in the classroom from their professors. Every hateful thing imaginable has been said on college campuses. Well, of course, Governor Abbott would never pass an executive order to protect white people specifically. He'd be called a supremacist and a nationalist. And what Matt has figured out is what a lot of people have figured out probably is not only do white people and Christians, there's a lot of people that are anti-Christian, but you don't hear Christians complaining, oh, they're all anti-Christ, they're anti-Christian. You're not allowed to say that because just saying that people are anti-Christian would probably be considered hate speech. But in general, other racial groups, other religious groups, other groups get special things. And then if you simply even comment on it and say, I want equality, I want the First Amendment, everyone just calls you hateful. So I get what Matt's saying, but of course, no Republican or Democrat would ever do anything of the such because they're actively working against, in my view, certain groups. So they pass lopsided laws and it's not random. It's because they're rigging the system against certain people. I don't feel like I'm a victim. I just want the free speech to be able to talk about this and be honest about it because I'm not a victim. I'm fine. I don't care what goes on on college campuses, but clearly it's been pretty weird for a long time. And colleges do raise the youth into the next generation, so it is an important topic. Let's watch. You could, again, easily kill all these birds with one stone if you just banned all hateful statements against all people, but he doesn't do that. That doesn't happen anywhere. Instead, certain groups are singled out for protections while certain groups are given no special protections at all. Third, I make that last point, as I said, for the sake of argument. My actual position is that there should not be any hate speech laws or policies at all. I reject hate speech as a concept, as a category. What Matt says here about rejecting hate speech is interesting. I want to interject before I play his explanation. I try to be a nice person. I try to get along with everybody if I can. But the thing is, who gets to decide what hate speech is? Some people hate the truth and they consider the truth hate speech. Some people hate science and they consider basic science hate speech. The pharmaceutical industry doesn't like criticism of the products that are making them tens of billions of dollars, so they pay off politicians and media companies in order to call it 
hate speech. So when Matt talks about in this next clip, letting the government decide what your thoughts are, and if you're just hating this or hating that or hating one person or you disagreeing with what one person says means you hate an entire group, not only is that crazy, sometimes you're not being hateful at all and you're just simply stating the calm, reasonable truth, and the calm, reasonable truth sounds like hate speech to the psychopaths that apparently are making a lot of executive decisions in the United States of America. Let's take a listen. Hate speech, if it's anything, is simply speech that expresses hate. And some speech does express hate. But what I reject is the idea that any governmental authority should ever be in the business of trying to read the mind of a speaker and determine whether there was hatred behind it, and then punish the statement based on their own interpretation of the emotional state of the person who made the statement. I reject that completely. Do you guys want to see how far false accusations of anti-Semitism have gone and why it's insane that the Republican Party is passing these anti-Semitism hate speech laws? Before I even show you what they are so you can see how crazy they are, here's the DHS Secretary Mayorkas. When pressed on why he's doing such a bad job at the border, he invokes uh, basically a false accusation of anti-Semitism to stop criticism of the job he's doing as an individual leader. Frankly, Mr. Secretary, I think that your performance is despicable. And I think the fact that you are not willing to provide answers to this committee is absolutely atrocious. Mr. Chairman, may I? Like, if you'd like to have a, a minute to respond, you were oh, welcome I, to. I would, and I'm not sure I'll limit it to 60 seconds. That's fine. Number one, uh, what I found despicable is the implication uh, that uh, this language, tremendously odious, um, uh, actually could be emblematic of the sentiments of the 260,000 men and women of the Department of Homeland Security, number one. Number two, uh, Senator Hawley takes an adversarial approach to me in this question, and perhaps he doesn't know my own background. Perhaps he does not know that I am the child of a Holocaust survivor. Perhaps he does not know that my mother lost almost all her family at the hands of the Nazis. And so I find his adversarial tone to be entirely misplaced. I find it to be disrespectful of me and my heritage. And I do not expect an apology, but I did want to say what I just articulated. Anyway, let's get through those Matt Walsh clips real quick, and then I want to show you what the actual hate speech laws are, because Matt claims in this video not to know. I also reject the idea that any form of rhetoric at all should be banned or punished on college campuses. Threats and incitements are already illegal, as we've established. So putting those aside, we are left with opinions, claims, ideas, exhortations, uh, declarations. And as for those, even if they're wrong, even if they're baseless, even if they're offensive, even if they are, yes, hateful, they should not be banned or punished, and they certainly should not be the subject of an executive order from the governor's office. What Matt's talking about here is a basic First Amendment principle understanding that every Republican pretends to have, but they gaslight themselves into thinking it's not true, or they get brainwashed by people like Ben Shapiro into not even knowing that this stuff is being passed through legislation, because Ben Shapiro, like I said earlier, paints the situation in 2019. Him and Charlie Kirk were running around doing these college campus speeches and stuff, and a lot of people knew that these anti-Semitism hate speech laws were being passed into government, and Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro not only wouldn't talk about it, but when they got questioned on it, they'd start accusing you of being hateful without being able to answer the question. So Ben and Charlie successfully tricked Republicans in 2019 to basically gatekeep these hate speech laws and be like, it's us, the reasonable, moderate conservatives who are really good and, you know, we're the ones that'll tell you what's right and wrong. And then everybody else in this category is these people and they're so bad and they have no points to make whatsoever. And it's like, that's not the truth of what everything doesn't go into two groups and you're right. And every, it, that's not true. So a lot of people are going to hear this for the first time now because of the Candace Owens firing. But if Candace Owens wasn't brave and she didn't get fired or get leave or however whatever happened there you have to understand this would have been swept under the rug potentially for a couple more years until people woke up on social media and before i play the last two clips and show you what the definitions are this is why it's so important to pay attention not just idol worship donald trump or daily wire 
Use your brain, use the Constitution, and let these people know when they're wrong. Because when enough people do that, that's why Matt Walsh made this video. And I'm not taking full credit because if I just tweet to Matt Walsh on Twitter, it doesn't matter. I'm only one person. The reason that he made that video is because I got one of the top comments with hundreds and thousands of people liking it and commenting also. So I'm not going to take credit for it, but I do know that my comment specifically that Matt Walsh answered to is probably the reason he even made this video. He probably never would have done that. And this conversation never would have happened if the Candace thing didn't happen. So I just want to say thank you everybody for paying attention. And now that X is a little bit more free, you're starting to see these conversations become dominant. And everybody that's been lying and scamming on these topics for five years, they look like phony idiots because they are phony idiots. So for the first time in a long time, they're actually facing honest scrutiny and a lot of people are spiraling. Matt Walsh took the dare, did the video, and I'm grateful. He did a great job. I think he did an excellent breakdown of the First Amendment and these anti-Semitism speech laws, and I, I think it proves that Matt Walsh is way more legit than most news hosts on this topic. Let's watch two more. We cannot pretend to care in the slightest bit about free speech if we are banning speech on the basis that it's hateful towards protected groups. This is not just an infringement on free speech. It is the total eradication of free speech. Because after all, the only kind of speech that really needs legal protection in the first place is, is, is the speech that is deemed hateful and inappropriate by the powers that be. Speech that is pleasant and uncontroversial and friendly and gentle, that doesn't need to be protected. I mean, you could live in a country with no free speech. You could live in North Korea. You could be locked up in a communist prison camp and you'd still be able to say all those sorts of things. 100%. The First Amendment's not there to protect basic speech like, hey, I'm going to go to the store and buy bread and water. It's there to protect political and social opinions that are controversial. And right now, the truth seems to be controversial. But here's the really important part. And it's something that Matt didn't include in his video because he said he doesn't know. Maybe he doesn't really know. Maybe he does and he doesn't want to cover it. I'm not sure. I'll go with the theory that five years have passed and Matt Walsh has no idea what definition they're using for anti-Semitism. So we'll listen to the clip and then we'll educate Matt and anybody who watched his video, which is excellent, by the way, watch the whole thing. And we're left not knowing what definition they're using. Let's take a look. So when a person in power says, you have free speech, unless it's speech that I find to be really inappropriate personally, that's another way of saying that you don't have free speech. And this point, I would think, is obvious. Now, I don't know exactly what sort of speech the governor considers anti-Semitic. That's a big part of the problem here, because what we know is that any popularly used label for any particular form of bigotry is in a constant state of expansion. All right, education time. So what definition of anti-Semitism is Governor Abbott using? Well, it happens to be the same definition that Governor Christy Noem used, Donald Trump used through executive order, Ron DeSantis has used multiple times, Glenn Youngkin has used, Sarah Huckabee Sanders has used, Governor Kemp has used, and it's probably in over half of the country now. So what definition is it? They're all using the same definition. If you go to Google and you type in defining anti-Semitism State Department, the first search result should be defining anti-Semitism United States Department of State official government website. Why do I tell you to go there? Because it explains it perfectly and lists the hate speech phrases that are the official definition of anti-Semitism. So almost everyone in the U.S. government is pushing the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, which is the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, which apparently is considered the working definition of anti-Semitism that seemed to have been established in Bucharest on May of 2016. You could read more about it there, but let's get to the part that everybody's wondering. What are the hate speech laws? Because they're all passing these exact ones. Let me just read a few because I don't want to go through all of them. Making mendacious, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such or the power of Jews as a collective, such as especially but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. Let me give an example of how this rule, which is extremely broad because it says especially but not exclusively, let me show you how this has backfired on somebody who has been passing this as their working definition. Ted Cruz with Tim Kaine 
has passed a resolution to try to shut up people in government and Congress from being quote unquote anti-Semitic. And of course, they use this definition of anti-Semitism like everyone in government always does. But then he said something about Bloomberg owning media, which he does. And Ted Cruz was smeared by the media as anti-Semitic. Of course, Ted Cruz isn't anti-Semitic, but he actually kind of is because he's legally changed the definition of anti-Semitism and then broke his own hate speech laws. Trump has done the same. Well, you know, the biggest uh, change I've seen in Congress is Israel literally owned Congress. You understand that 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And it was so powerful. He said at one point that Israel used to literally own Congress. And of course, he's just talking, but it is considered anti-Semitic since he himself did pass an executive order in 2019 that defined what I just read as anti-Semitic. So the press smeared Donald Trump as anti-Semitic. And he's been called anti-Semitic over multiple things. I don't think Donald Trump is anti-Semitic if I were to define the word, but my definition doesn't matter. It's what they passed through law. And Donald Trump has played himself and passed a definition that he constantly betrays. He's either an idiot or a puppet. I don't really know. It's embarrassing. Anyway, here's another one of the hate speech laws accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or to the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interests of their own nations. So if you say that any Jewish person in America has dual loyalty to Israel or loyalty to Israel, that's considered anti-Semitism by law in certain areas. Obviously, they can't just arrest you for saying that, but I'm sure at some point in America, that might be a reality because that's what happens in other countries that don't have the First Amendment and start passing hate speech laws. But in general, the weird part is not only has Ben Shapiro never condemned these anti-Semitism hate speech laws, to my knowledge, but he tweets them almost word for word. The one I just read, here's Ben Shapiro's Twitter from 2019. Around the same time they were being passed into law, he not only doesn't cover it to condemn this violation of the First Amendment, he's tweeting the laws like he agrees with them, which is weird because if you watch Ben Shapiro's show, you don't come away from it thinking like, oh, this guy doesn't like Israel. It's like he does like Israel and he wants everyone to like Israel and he calls you anti-Semitic if you don't seem to like Israel as much as he likes Israel. So that's, uh, I think to, to think that that's why the existence of the state of Israel is the single greatest guarantor of my loyalty to the United States, frankly. It's just wild that this is one of the anti-Semitism laws. Another one is using the symbols and images associated with classic anti-Semitism. Example, claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel to characterize Israel or Israelis. So they mentioned Jesus Christ in the anti-Semitism laws, and now it gets into biblical discussion. So if you say what I just read about Jesus, depending who the listener is, they can say your conversation about part of the Bible is actually anti-Semitic. And what I've learned by listening to interviews recently, to be honest, I didn't know this until people started talking more, is not all, because I don't think this is like a common thing or anything, but there are some people when you ask them about anti-Semitism, they keep saying 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. And it sounds like to me... It's kind of a weird statement. So let's just track back a bit to understand the history of anti-Semitism. 2,000 years ago, Jews don't accept Jesus as Messiah. It feels like a lot of people think that Jesus was the original anti-Semite and his followers were the original anti-Semites. So to include Jesus in the anti-Semitism speech laws is about as revealing as every podcast I've listened to where people just openly admitted that they believe anti-Semitism started thousands of years ago. You could read all the laws for yourself, but I think the ones I read give you a scope of how wild it is that they're passing these speech laws and rules to define what is hate or not for one race, one religion, and one country. And DeSantis, Trump, a bunch of Christians, sometimes they're passing this and saying, oh, it's a religious bill. It's for religious freedom or religious protection, but it doesn't include every religion. It only lines those hate speech laws out. Why are there no anti-Christian hate speech laws? You can't even ask that question or else they'll say that you're just being hateful, but people need to wake up because this has been happening since 2019. And I'll tell you, Matt Walsh would not have covered this if people on X didn't realize that he was a phony baloney like everyone else at this media company. This never would have happened if Candace Owens didn't part ways with Daily Wire for being smeared as anti-Semitic. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out if people and characters in the media like a Ben Shapiro constantly call everybody anti-Semitic. I mean, count the times that he's called other people anti-Semitic and then put that against the amount of times that he's fully condemned these anti-Semitism hate speech laws. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that it seems like he's okay with these rules. 
he tweets these rules, and I would even argue that it's possible that not word for word or definition basis, but a lot of these media organizations are policed by these rules. If you cross this threshold, you're anti-Semitic. Jeremy Boring tried to define it. He didn't use this definition, but he just said it's when you hate this group. And it's like, yeah, sure, but what do you consider hate? Because he couldn't even name one person that's more critical of Israel than him or that he wants people to be that wasn't anti-Semitic. So it seems like Jeremy has no problem being like, oh, these people are anti-Semitic. This person's anti-Semitic. Millions of people are anti-Semitic. Okay, that's like me saying, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist. And you're like, okay, can you define that? And it's like people who hate this race. Well, can you explain it further? Because that's not really like a strong definition. And you're like, oh, you're just being hateful. You know, these are the games that a lot of people, and I'm not just blaming Daily Wire because, you know, Ben obviously has his uh, Overton window, as he calls it. But here's the real meat of the matter. When Ben Shapiro tries to explain what line it is that Candace Owens crossed. And so when it comes to the host on The Daily Wire, obviously everyone is able to say what they want. Nobody ever comes to me and says, you can't say X. Nobody ever says that to Walsh. No one ever said that to Candace. But the reality is that there is an Overton window at The Daily Wire. Obviously there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. Uh, and you know, but you can't talk about what his Overton window is because one of the hate speech rules would probably deem that as hate speech to speculate what might be the limit, which we all found out what is the limit. It's also obvious. So thank you, Matt Walsh, for covering this. Look up the definition so you can be familiar with exactly what they're passing through law. And Matt Walsh, if you choose to make this a talking point that you repeat often, because the First Amendment is extremely important, don't be surprised if you get Candace Owens, because I believe just watching conservative media and hearing people tell me how they've been blacklisting people behind the scenes, and I'm not saying Daily Wire or Daily Wire exclusively, but just, you know, this underlying thing that all conservative media has been doing it to me it feels like that's their entire existence like they're there to just be fake opposition they're there to not talk about these hate speech laws tweet out these hate speech laws accuse people of being hateful with these hate speech laws and then getting mad at anybody who ever talks about them and trying to paint it as if there's two groups like the good guys versus the bad guys when the reality is that's not what's going on here at all and Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro are not the kings of conservatism and everybody else is horrible and there's no possible way you could disagree with them without being hateful. They've been doing this for five years. It's all falling apart now. Everybody's noticing. And I'm not surprised because the truth is the truth. Even when I tweeted stuff in 2019, I know I'm going to get falsely accused. I know I'm going to get lied about. I know I got blacklisted. I know I was getting monitored by a lot of these organizations. And they called me before I went to events to make sure because my tweets, I said this and that. And it's like, you guys could say whatever you want and do whatever you want, but the truth is the truth. Like, do you think nobody's going to notice this? It did take a long time, but of course they're going to notice because the whole existence of our movement, and especially people like Dave Rubin and Ben Shapiro, their whole come up was like, no safe spaces on college campuses. Let us have our opinions. And then it's not just kind of fake. Their whole thing is fake. They're just fake people. It's like, oh, but, 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 but this, not this, and then they use the same logic that the liberals use for them. I seem to remember Republicans spending the past, I don't know, 10 years complaining about the safe space mentality on college campuses. And now we, here we have a, the Republican governor of Texas issuing an executive order commanding college campuses to be safe spaces. And liberals use the same logic, and they're both hypocrites. It's not like liberals are completely right. They're also idiots. Now they're getting a taste of their own medicine, and they're like, why? And it's like, you did this to people for five years, but now the roles are flipped, and you see that the Republicans, they're the ones being kind of liberal, and not liberal like free speech liberal, but like phony, safe space, I can't have opinions, and you can't even say that someone is loyal to this country. It's like, can we have fair rules for Italians, for Mexicans, for other countries? Are, are we gonna make hate speech laws and rules for everybody? And it's like, no, 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 that itself is hate speech. Thinking that you're equal is hate speech. Wanting your religion to have protections when our religion has, that's hate speech. And you know, the more that this comes out and the more people talk about this, you'll realize that it was never about people getting the same stuff. It's just about not talking about what's going on. Even Lindsey Graham is getting ratioed, trying to say it's anti-Semitic to say that he's taking lobbying money. And even on X, it's like he's getting fact-checked by community notes and they're like, you have taken money from these lobbies or at least lobbies that are similar. So, you know, the whole shtick is up, the jig is up. 
And uh, in America, the First Amendment is really, really near and dear to everybody of every race, every religion, and every gender that actually respects the Constitution. And the reason for it is obvious when you look around the rest of the world. So whether you're liberal or conservative or no matter what religious or racial group that you're a part of, you know, completely ignoring that and just calling anybody who talks about it hateful is a horrible, horrible strategy to be popular and respected because most people are starting to figure out that they were lied to. And I think that that is like the theme of this year is not all because there's still a lot of people lost in the sauce, but a lot of left wingers and right wingers, they're tired of fighting the political fights, the this versus that group. Like it's getting annoying. It's getting old. And I'm starting to see more and more people see through it and just call it for what it is. So God bless you guys. I appreciate you. Let me know if you like this video and to support, check out my shop, dreamrare.com. I appreciate everybody that buys stuff. God bless you.